What's up gamers, it's Above, and in today's video, we'll be going over 7 key tips within the newly reprised King's Fall Raid that most players just don't know about. These tips will not only speed up your runs, they'll optimize your damage and just make things easier for you and your fire team. Whether you're running with your friends or an LFG group, I have no doubt that you'll learn something new today. And if you enjoyed today's video, a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. Now, let's get into it. The first tip of today's video takes place in the totems encounter and it's going to take a bit of self-control because i'm going to be asking you guys to not kill the ads in the center of the arena you see these ads don't actually aggro you for the most part they just wander down to the right and left hand totems and the reason we want to leave these alive is because the more you slay these out the less ads your teammates have on the plates to kill which means our death singer stacks won't count up as quickly and the encounter takes significantly longer to complete so if you let those ads filter down from the center of the arena, you're going to allow your teammates to collect more Death Singer stacks, which means you're completing the encounter significantly faster, which I don't think anybody is opposed to. For tip number two, we're moving on to the War Priest encounter. And this one was actually discovered by Reddit user Primitive AK, whose post will be linked down in the description below. The basic idea behind this one is that we never have to read the totem sequence ever again. So how do we do it? Once the plate sequence has been initiated, have the right and left hand plates step on, then have the middle plate step on, then off, then back on again. This will randomly assign the brand aura to one of the three plate holders, which means we never have to read the totems ever again. You simply skip that mechanic entirely. So for all of you LFG groups out there who have accidentally stepped onto the wrong plate in phase three damage, never again. You guys can simply step on your plates, do some damage, and get through this encounter in no time. Tip number three also takes place in the War Priest encounter, but this time is related to our damage phase. As I'm sure you guys have dealt with, he can hit the cha-cha slide at just the wrong time, dip behind the totems, and scuff our damage. This can lead to additional phases, which makes this one of the longest encounters in the entire raid. To avoid this, you guys can actually jump up to the right-hand side of the stage, throw down a well, and have have the boss never leave your line of sight ever again. I only recommend this if we're dealing damage from the right or middle plates because you guys will have a free exit to get out after damage and stay safe behind the totems. I would never recommend this if you're dealing damage from the left hand plate. And as a cheeky little bonus, you have a much easier route up to the top left knight than you would otherwise. So regardless of your skill level, this strategy is for everybody and it'll make your war priest encounter much smoother and faster. As as we move on to Golgoroth, we arrive at tip number four. This one takes place during the damage phase and is actually related to the gaze holders. As I'm sure most of your teams already do, you have four people DPSing and two gaze holders that typically don't damage at all. But this is actually where a massive skill gap comes into play and if done properly, can lead to easy one phases. So how do we do this? Well, have one person stand up on the bridge and one person stand above your fire team before DPS starts. Have the person on the bridge draw the aggro, which will allow the person above your fire team, the first gaze holder, to draw the gaze extremely easily because they'll have the back turned to them. Once they have the gaze, the person on the bridge can jump down and damage with your fire team. The first gaze holder will then start counting down from 10, and when the counter hits around 6 seconds, you can jump up on the bridge opposite of where you're currently standing for damage and grab the gaze. You want to leave with about six seconds remaining, which will leave you plenty of time to get up to the bridge and shoot Golgoroth's back with any precision weapon such as Arbalist or a 90 RPM sniper, which will take the gaze in just one shot. You can then beeline it for the next orb that your team will be damaging from, while your other gaze holder jumps down into the pit to do damage. You alternate this roll over and over and over again, and just a couple million damage from each of you makes all the difference between getting a one phase and not, which is great if you guys are going to be farming this raid consistently over the next several months. Tip number five takes us to the Daughters of Oryx, and this one's actually funny because it contradicts everything you guys have learned about this encounter. You see, normally you want to collect three taken relics and then dunk it on the sister that isn't singing, the one that's not glowing green. But in this case, we actually want to dunk on the incorrect sister, the one that's throwing 
throwing a fit. And we do this on purpose because when you kill it, it skips the wipe animation and can save you anywhere from 15 to 30 seconds depending on how quickly you kill each sister. With weapons like Galahorn, Hothead, Divinity, and even Wardcliffe Coil in the game, we're typically melting the bosses in just a few seconds, and if you kill the correct sister, you have to stay in the immunity aura until they perform the wipe mechanic, which, as I noted earlier, can take up to 30 seconds depending on how efficient you are. So you're sitting there literally doing nothing, when instead, you can kill the incorrect sister and skip this immunity phase entirely. Once you've killed the incorrect sister, you can immediately start looking for the knight and begin building the platforms to head into the second damage phase, which speeds up this encounter significantly. Our next tip is an easy one, and it's something that's so easy to get wrong if you're constantly killing ads in the boss room. When you're heading into damage at Oryx, you want to make sure to leave some of the thrall alive. You're in an immunity bubble after all, so they can't hurt you, and if you guys are using things like Font of Might, you want to make sure that you have things like Elemental Ordnance or Melee Wellmaker, maybe even Supreme Wellmaker if you guys are going to be running Stasis, and leave the adds alive to help you proc those damage buffs. If you guys are constantly nuking adds with weapons like Trinity Ghoul, you're not going to be able to proc Font of Might, which is a free 25% damage bonus that you guys are just leaving on the table if you guys are constantly killing those adds. So leave them alive, resist that urge to kill them, and you guys will have a much easier time two-phasing Oryx than you would otherwise. The seventh and final tip actually takes place when you're coming out of DPS. If you guys don't know how to tell whether it's going to be bombs or shade right away, knights will begin spawning on all four plates, which will cue you in that it's actually going to be bombs, which can be dangerous if you guys aren't paying attention. So one thing you can do to actually shorten the duration of the bombs is to just kill your knights. If you do this right away, the bombs instantly end, which makes this much less of a threat if you guys are running with LFG groups. If you guys organize to kill the knights right away, it's just not a factor at all, and you can go on into the next phase immediately. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope that whether you're a new player or someone that's run this raid dozens of times already, that you guys learn something valuable to speed up your runs in the future. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for me. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.